songs and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was just boom. unnecessary. You kidding me? You can't be out of range. Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. Darrell of the Abbey and Way here. I wanted to give you something that's been very much requested of me. A breakdown of the mythical creatures in the Mythos mode gameplay. And I felt the best way to do this would be to just kind of talk about what's different. And, and in, the, in the context of what was already in the game as we knew it. And what are we getting in the future. So truth, truth behind the myth mode, still there, still in it. I currently have um, allow all mythical units toggled on so that I can see almost all of the mythical creatures. There are 16 mythical creatures available, not counting uh, Ajax's Paragon variants. Um, there's only 15 shown here, and that's because Argos has this thing where it gets an extra type of centaur. So there's, keep that in mind, there is one more centaur that only Argos gets, but you cannot get it if you are in... Um, allowing all mythical units for some reason. See, it's just not represented here. And so, in in mythological mode, there are 20 mythical creatures that are like the bog standard, not the, the Cerberus, Hydra, and Griffin Patriarch. And so, here's what they've added, because clearly there's more. What they've added is one new type of giant, a giant skirmisher. And they have also added and taken away, it, I, honestly, I would say revamped the centaurs. And the net result is that we have three new centaur units. So the centaurs we have now are the centaur hunters, the centaur fighters, the centaur archers, the centaur scouts, the centaur warriors, the centaur outriders, the centaur lancers, and the centaur elders completely revamped the way centaurs are in this game it was honestly it was such a big night and day difference to me that that's why i knew right away i wanted to do the hippolyta campaign because you get access to the centaurs from the get-go and because there's so much variation with them that you can do a completely mounted army now in any campaign any campaign completely mounted army and it would it's, it's definitely viable. I'm playing it in Legendary right now, and if you've been following along on that, um, here there's a card over my face, as it always is. Like, check it out. Uh, so, what has changed with the specific units? Cost is a big one. Um, 300 fund harpies is absurd. Very absurd. They have, like, no armor, no hit points. They're only 100 hit points per model, but that's because there's 60, 60 miles per unit. Do I have this set to... Yeah, ultra unit size, yep. And, you know, their speed's okay, morale is... Uh, melee, like, so-so stats, right? Definitely so-so stats. They have 50% missile resistance, which is cool. And then they have this vicious unbound ability where they could use it on themselves, lose all of their melee defense, and they gain 25% armor piercing, 10% speed, and 15 melee attack just to be absolutely absurd like you know you're gonna dive bomb some some skirmishers get them harpies on there use that viciousness unbound it's pretty cool the upgraded version of the harpy the harpy fiend it's only cost 450 same abilities slightly better stats same number uh there it is basically they're just they're just better all around you know they have an extra 10 hit points per model they've got 10 more armor 10 more morale uh, they've got five more melee attack, three more melee defense, which you could lose all of to buff all of your other stats, 12 more damage, and 10 more charge bonus. Uh, I mean, frankly, there's... It's hard to tell if these guys are going to be any good. I do like their cost. I think the cost is really good for the utility that you're going to get out of them. I think, I think that's really where they are going to shine. Um, if your opponents bring skirmishers, which still is a big question mark. Is skirmish actually viable? Oftentimes it isn't, so who are your harpies actually going to fight? That's what I'm getting at here. Moving on, let's talk about the sirens next. They're, they've got a major facelift here. Um, first of all, like they don't have the same sirens lure anymore. It's a very different sirens lure. Let me show you what it is on Truth Behind the Myth Mode. The Siren's Lure ability, they are, they cost 670, 
is uh, it forces the target to attack the taunter. Why this has changed? Because sirens are airborne. These are a unit with flight. You cannot force a unit to attack a unit that is flying. It's impossible. And it would just be really goofy to look at watching a troop like run directly underneath of the sirens and then I guess just run around in circles. It, it might seem amusing, but it would just be a little bit too meh, you know? So instead, it causes the unit to go berserk, makes them uncontrollable, they'll automatically attack nearby enemies. We're familiar with berserk by now. Uh, similar stats to the, the harpies, um, except that they are very fragile. Um, 100 hit points per model, but there's only 40 of them again. And you can see they've got the morale, they've got the speed, they got better melee, they have much less melee attack, much less charge bonus. But the other thing the sirens have are their slings. I do believe it's a sling. 18 ammo, 150 range is only so-so, 32 missile damage, so they can also be annoying while they're flying around up there. The next unit to look at that got a fade slipped is the Cordovantes. Cordovantes, uh, still 1,300 funds, but I'm going to tell you, they don't perform like they used to. Um, yeah, let me show you the Cordovantes as they were. 1,300 funds, you got... Um, Immune to Psychology, Unbreakable, Flanky Defense Improved, Shield Wall Formation for some really amazing battle utility, Bonus versus Large, Swordsman, Axeman, lots of damage, good shield at 65% missile block chance that you can bump up all the way to 100%. It's uh, it's a fantastic unit, everybody loves it, and in Truth Behind the Myth, I'm sorry, and in Mythological Mode, the Cordovantes, still costing 1300 what do we get? We get Strong Vigor, which is cool. We've got immune to psychology, good, they still have that, I suppose. Flanking attack improved, flanking attack improved, and lion's roar ability for some really neat utility. Um, very good damage, there's only 24 units per model, 45 armor, no shields, 70 uh, morale is okay, 55 speed, 60 melee attack. These guys are, are excellent at fighting heroes. As you can see, they have armor piercing and a bonus versus heroes. Um, their armor piercing value is actually 78. You can mob up, mob them up on top of uh, uh, Achilles if you like, and just watch them go to town. Have them escort your own hero. Activate that lion's roar, and your hero can't get taunted by um, by other units because nobody else can use special abilities in the area. It is a utility flanking damage dealer, and it says here that their weight class is heavy. So I think. They are going to count as a uh, large, yeah, they're going to count as a large creature uh, because of their entity and unit size in, in terrain types. And their weight class is going to be heavy, so they might also be decent against chariots. Stopping the chariots on the move. They're going to be able to run down most heroes, um, except for mounted heroes. But the way we remembered the Cordovantes is that they were very good at, you know, um, holding the line tearing down the the super elite infantry of the enemy side and and just being the champions Gordovantes in mythos mode totally different totally different completely revamped Spartoy also got a facelift uh this is a uh, Spartoy from truth behind the myth mode 183 damage you know uh, an unbreakable rampaging heavy infantry charger that could go on a rampage right right so in Mythos mode, Spartoy costs 100 more now, and they have a ton of abilities going on here. They have 100 morale, but they don't break. They just start to crumble. Their, their damage is still relatively the same, actually. And they have the Seeds of the Dragon, because the, the myth on, on Spartoy and the reason why they look like a dragon to a dragon was slain outside of Thebes, Corinth, I can't remember. Not off the top of my head, but um, essentially a dragon was defeated and they, they, this hero took the, the teeth of the dragon and, and planted the, uh, the teeth into the ground like they were seeds and upsprung from the earth, the Spartoi, where those teeth were planted and they were, you know, peerless warriors was the deal. So they can resurrect um, units. <laughs> They can resurrect fallen warriors at 300 hit points, sealed per second, uh, but they can't move if you use this ability. 
they crumble to dust instead of um, instead of retreat. So very similar to vampire units in Warhammer. The dust calls. This is even more crumbling, is what it is. Is um, crumble to dust in, when their morale is above shattered level. But the dust calls. They'll they'll do even more damage to themselves if their morale ever falls below zero. Um, they're immune to flanking, which is good. They're bone warriors. Sparks away weaken and crumble as the tide of battle turns against them. Right, right, right. They got the rampo- rampage is still there. They can hide in the forest and they have perfect vigor. S- so that perfect vigor, as um, as anybody will remember of um, first seeing Archilocos, is an insanely good trait to have. That means these combat abilities never go away. They will not lose those stats from from fatigue. They're going to constantly be fighting at the same level of intensity the entire time. So basically, you've just taken the Spartoi as they were, made it so that they never lose their stamina, and that they never run away, which they didn't before, but now they have the added benefit of maybe coming back from the dead. Spartoi de- are, are definitely greatly improved. And I think my two favorite heavy hitting expensive units here. So the Cyclops and the Minotaur both got huge um, price increases, but they are also a new weight class. These guys are gargantuan. Gargantuan creatures stand out on the field of battle. They are capable of cutting large swaths of destruction through their foes. Using them effectively is not so much an issue as is avoiding their wrath if they are against you. Um, Cyclops still has his boulder, still has his blind rage. He has a new ability, Poseidon's Offering, where he creates an earthquake in an area where everybody that's there loses 25% melee attack, 50% speed, and 25% melee defense. Pop that on top of a chariot. Freaking dare you. Uh, you'll be impressed. You'll be very impressed. And um, all that still, uh, 1,219 damage. Um, the, he even got an armor buff. Uh, everything has gone up. Almost everything. Any everything of matters anyway has gone up. Armor piercing bonus for swords and axes. Five point five second attack interval. He's absurd. He's going to do great. And I I definitely think that both the Cyclops and the Minotaur are going to be much better picks in multiplayer battles than the Cerberus, the Hydra, or the Griffin Patriarch. I think all three of those are going to be because of their cost in particular, are going to be used a lot less than the Cyclops and the Minotaur. Let's talk about the Minotaur, who is apparently a duelist. (laughs) Gargantuan, melee expert, damage dealer. I love taking the Minotaur to shut down things like the Cerberus, Hydra, or Griffin. Um, Same abilities as before. Savage Roar, minus 10 morale for everybody within 40 meters. Bull Rush tramples enemy units, unable to attack, plus 20% speed. That unable to attack is still kind of hurtful. But this one's cool. Gore causes huge initial damage and a damage over time effect. Strong against single targets, bleeding for 30 seconds. Basically, he's got his 900 damage. He's got his 42 charge bonus. You put him on a charge attack order against a hero, against another, you know, single entity like the Cyclops, um, like Cerberus, Hydra, Griffin. And then this guy just pounds on in there. Gets huge initial damage with a charge bonus, and then he's, you know, he set himself up to succeed with everything else. Um, the Minotaur and the Cyclops, honestly, I think my two favorite changes in in out of the units that we had had before. That and, you know, cheap harpies, that's pretty good too. The next thing you're talking about, though, is uh, the, the, the giants. I'm going to save the centaurs for last, because there's a lot to talk about with centaurs. So, new giant unit, Giant Skirmishers. The cheapest giant is at 700. Before, the Giant Vanguard at 580 was the cheapest, um, but now the Giant Vanguard is 850. That's because these guys are now um, large uh, unit sizes. I'm sorry, large entity sizes. And they are all capable of this Children of Gaia healing ability where they don't move, but they'll recover 80 hit points per second. Uh, regenerates massive amounts of hit points when, when the moment it is, acti- is activated as well. And so these guys throw javelins at 115 range for 152 damage. Nice. It'll be interesting to see how well these are played. They also do get vanguard deployment, meaning that you don't just have to put your gi- giant vanguard out there alone. You can actually send them out there with a little bit of support. Giant vanguard, more damage. Their shield is still at a 65% block chance. They're still good versus gates. 
Um, they still got Vanguard deployment, but they also have uh, gained that Children of Gaia ability. Uh, actually, I wonder if the unit size has changed. So this went, this went from... This is now a large entity with 16 units. Let's see how they were. 16. They were still considered a large entity and at 16 unit size. And this is also considered a light. The huge air quotes on that, though. Yeah, the giant vanguard are no longer considered light. They're considered heavy, even though they're large anyway. That mostly matters for, um, for things like terrain, but maybe they actually have gotten a mass improvement as well. And then that brings us to the giant uh, bowman. Uh, 150 funds more. Really, it's the same unit. They just happen to also have the Children of Gaia ability. Um, I mean, let's see here. 244. I think they got more melee damage. But their melee attack and melee defense is very low. So that's 28, 15, 244. So they've gained some melee attack, lost a lot of their melee defense, but gained damage. So there are like small tweaks and stuff in, in what all of these units are capable of. So some time is going to need to be... Um, needed just to get everybody kind of used to what the new new is i think that's actually a ranged decrease i could I, I i don't feel like going back to check let's just move on giant spearman uh 193 damage bonus versus large of 30 per attack 5.5 second attack interval 12 charge bonus these guys don't have their um javelins anymore and they're not as armored as they used to be either so but again trade-off children of gaia and then last but not least, that brings us to the Giant Champions, which are a little bit armored. 384, their damage looks about the same. Again, Children of Gaia ability. But that's about it. Now, let's get to the Centaurs. I'm going to talk about the Truth Behind the Myth Centaurs first for a baseline. Starting with the Centaur Warrior. 450, light, I'm sorry, medium cavalry, uh, causes fear. Done, right? Done. Heavy Cavalry, Savage Centaur Warriors, 660 funds. You can take two of them, very reliable. Centaur Champions, 1,080 funds. You can only take one of them, but they're just, they're heavy cavalry chads. 60 units, fantastic, heavy hitters. The other Centaurs, the Centaur Scouts, 525. They throw some javelins. But there's not really much there that does well for them, notably. They also don't have um, Causes Fear. The only other Centaur to talk about is the Centaur Elder, which is a bow cavalry. I think you could only take one of them. 145 range, 51 missile damage. They do cause fear. Vanguard deployment. And horseback sharpshooting. All right. Now, Mythos Centaurs. For comparison, Centaur Hunters are the new centaur warrior but they also have javelins uh they don't cause fear they are a light cavalry they're considered a skirmish jav cav unit Fair, fairly low hit points low armor there's no um no shield on these boys 100 speed though is very good 90 range is not good 37 missile damage 16 of their individual attacks are points damage wise is armor piercing the Centaur Fighters, 550, also could be considered the, uh, uh, is, actually, this is definitely a new unit. This is a two-handed Spear Centaur. Two-handed Spear Centaur. So their spears are like the Chargers, right? But they're, they're a light cavalry still. Um, charge bonus is still only a 25, their damage is only a 60. I'm not impressed. I'm really not impressed with, uh, with Centaur Fighters. Um, I, I definitely say that these guys are not going to be winning winning you any awards. Definitely not winning you very many multiplayer battles. Centaur Archers, new unit. This is a medium bow cavalry, 100 speed, 130 range, 30 missile damage. They also happen to have Centaurian Circle, uh, which is the Cantabrian Circle. You lose some accuracy, but you gain missile resistance, range, and reload skill, which is really, really cool. Also note, no, does not cause fear. Centaur Scouts, new unit. It's like the upgraded version of the Centaur Fighter uh, and the Centaur Hunter, actually. That's what I meant to say, the Centaur Hunter. Costs 750. Um, they have a shield. They have their armor-piercing javelins. They've got a charge bonus of 28. So, rounded, well-rounded unit. Does not cause fear. Can fire while moving. Has horseback sharpshooting. Um, so, it can fire all around, etc., etc., etc. 
Next unit is the Centaur Warriors, which I would equate this to being like the Savage Centaur Warrior from Truth Behind the Myth Mode. New ability, Centaurian Wedge. Notably, no, does not cause fear, right? 35 armor, um, shielded 35% missile block chance, melee defense of only 24, 95 weapon damage, charge bonus 38. I'm, for 900 funds, I'm not impressed. Um, I think... That charge speed, acceleration, charge bonus at the cost of missile parry. Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm uh, I'm on the fence. I think 900 is very expensive for a unit with only 24 melee defense and only 95 damage. That's really what it kind of boils down to. 60 units again doesn't cause fear. Let's look at the next centaur, which is going to be the centaur outriders. Brand new unit once again. Armored and shielded, sword and shield centaurs that happen to carry three javelins with them. Really cool unit, does cause fear, has horseback sharpshooting. There's a lot going for this unit, 110 damage is okay. 41 melee defense is much better, 34 melee attack, 94 speed is phenomenal. It's not as good as the other centaurs at 100 speed, it's a heavy cavalry still anyway. Um, so there's a lot here to be excited about, it's also still expensive, 1150. The Centaur Lancers, 1,200, probably your best comparison to the um, uh, to the Centaur Champions is going to be between the Outriders and the Lancers. It's like they took the Champions and then split them into two schools of thought and and gave them more utility. This is a this is a heavy shock cavalry. Excellent morale, armored and shielded charger, charge bonus 55, causes fear, Centaurian wedge. You get the idea. Still, 120 damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, but you understand that their their value is going to be in the hit and run. But again, 1,200 funds. It's a tenth of your army cost right there. Keep that in mind. Since our elders, they've been they've been uh, you know they got a cost increase. They're still a medium bow cav with um, excellent battle speed, 100. They do not cause fear anymore. They have Centaurian Circle, 145 range, 48 missile damage plenty of things to be excited about now there's also of course the cerberus hydra and griffin units this is all of these are completely brand new and it is hard to say for sure like what the baseline is going to be uh to compare it against i can say just from my playing around with these units i can point out the ones that feel good to me the ones that feel good the marksmen of elysium feel phenomenal 190 range 58 weapon damage and their their missiles cause a melee attack penalty and a morale penalty pretty awesome they don't break they fight to the to the last man and i i'm just very impressed the last time i saw an 1100 fund archer and i thought it was a good idea it was the bows of mycenae and i was wrong but these guys definitely feel like they're worth it Giant Shades. I mean, I love the Giants so far in this game. I think Giant Shades are even better. The um, Revel and Death thing is really cool. If you can get total battle deaths over 1,800 in multiplayer battles, though, that's that's not going to happen so much. So don't get used to relying on that Revel and Death ability. Uh, another unit that, that uh, feels like it's going to be doing pretty, some pretty good and interesting things, there are mass point skirmishers. Um... I, in a campaign battle, I saw their stats just completely through the roof, and I couldn't even understand why. But their speed is at 110, and they cost 900. This makes them better than Outriders, Lancers, and Elders, as far as, you know, Centaur price points go. And they still have a really good Javelin, 44 damage, bonus versus large, armor piercing. And then they have some okay melee stats too, but that 110 speed is, that's un, it's unmatched. I'm gonna do a quick check here just to see if there's anybody who has speed quite like that. The only units that even come close are gonna be the Furies, the, um, the Lycian Winged Chariot at 105, and uh, definitely also worth noting, however, that um, that 110 speed is matched by the Griffin Patriarch and beat by the Lesser Griffin. The Lesser Griffin is now the new fastest unit in the game with 125 speed, 1000 damage. You just gotta, you gotta pay very close attention to it because it, it, it does only have 6,500 health and only 20 armor. Makes it very squishy compared to like say a hero. A hero, 5,900 hit points and 40 armor. 
and that's for one without a shield that's for an archer so that's just to give you a comparison wise like how squishy is a lesser griffin pretty squishy or you can double its health and grab yourself a griffin patriarch <laughs> anyway um i hope this has been uh, educational for you all i hope you find this stuff interesting i certainly do and I'm really looking forward to the day, September 2nd, when you all can put this in your hands and, and we can actually put together some decent battles. Some more of my peers in the content creator verified community with uh, Creative Assembly are going to be getting access soon. And I imagine I'm going to be, I'll have an opportunity to play more than a few games with some of them, okay? Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, leave your comments about other questions you might have about some of these units, about uh, what else might be new, how something might work differently. If I miss something, do, do point it out. Uh, and I'll, I'll read them and I'll respond to them like I always do. All right, ta-ta. I love you all. I'll see you guys in the next video.